Before the 1953 season, the Cardinals changed ownership. Anheuser-Busch took over. Gussie Bush became president of the ball club, and he noticed something about the roster right away. Uh, when he looked at the Cardinals roster, he actually noted the absence of black ball players and black athletes. He very quickly set out to change that. Gussie knew he sold beer to people of all races, and he wanted all fans to feel a sense of connection to the team on the field. So he signed a scout named Quincy Troop. His mission, to find the best black ball players possible to integrate the Cardinals. And he signed um, a very popular Negro Leagues and Major Leagues catcher named Quincy Troop. Troop was the first black catcher in American League history. And Troop had uh, relationships far and wide throughout the United States, um, throughout organized baseball. Troop signed a player named Lynn Tucker first, but he never cracked the big leagues. Next came the man who would, Tom Alston, a standout for the Pacific Coast League's San Diego Padres. Bush became enamored with Alston. Uh, he kind of fit the mold of this uh, strapping ball player. And he wasn't necessarily muscular, but he was tall. He was six foot five inches tall. He was called Tall, tall Tom or Long Tom. Uh, he was a little bit lanky, but he had uh, the possibility to grow into a power hitter. Bush sent four players and $100,000 to the Padres in exchange for the first baseman. That remains the most expensive deal for a barrier breaker by any major league club. That put enormous pressure and expectation on Tom Alston coming to St. Louis. Alston had a good spring in 54. He made the club out of camp. He homeward for each of his first two big league hits. But after a fantastic May, the league learned he couldn't handle high inside fastballs. He was demoted at the end of June, appearing in just 25 more games for the Cardinals during the next three seasons. He's clearly a player that we celebrate because he opened the door for so many other players, not just Bill Greeson and uh, Brooks Lawrence, who would also come up in the 1954 season. Bob Gibson and Kurt Flood would make their debuts in 1959. Almost seven decades after his debut, Alston's impact is still felt. The record books don't bear his name, but the history books always will. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Emily Stevens.